news at 11 starts right now. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Anusha Rasta. I'm Terry McSweeney. Life is about to change for millions of people across the Bay Area. Businesses bracing for big losses. Hospital workers continue to be stretched to the limit. NBC Bay Area Sergio Quintana begins our coverage from San Francisco. In San Francisco's Castro neighborhood, cocktails al fresco have become a regular part of many people's Saturday night ritual. Oh, so sad. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do the next couple weeks. At the Costco in the South of Market neighborhood, some people have already started stocking up. They didn't have any toilet paper. They were out of bottled water. So, like the the things from last time in March when we had the frenzy, you know, those are gone again. San Francisco and four other Bay Area counties have decided to enforce the state's stay-at-home order even before the region as a whole is required to. The Bay Area region still has 21.7% of intensive care unit beds available, which is more than the 15% trigger set by the state. But the San Joaquin Valley and Southern California regions just fell below that threshold this weekend, which means those areas, along with much of the Bay Area, will now begin the shelter-at-home order Sunday night. The big concern is not necessarily ICU beds. It's the people who work those facilities. Staff is so critical, and staff are getting sick. Uh, staff are becoming demoralized. And the more that we have COVID in the community, staff are not just going to get sick from regular colds and things we have during winter. They're going to get sick from COVID as well. And even as millions of Californians prepare to go into another stay-at-home order, there is a glimmer of hope. Speaking on the Today Show this morning, a member of the so FDA's Vaccine Advisory Committee said they will vote on approval next Thursday, and vaccinations could start soon after. If the FDA commissioner decides to issue approval, the EUA on that, on that day when the vote is taken, as early as Friday of next week, uh, we could see vaccinations happening across the country. Frontline medical staff will be among the first to get the vaccine, but that does not mean they will be immediately protected. That's because the Pfizer formula requires a second shot 21 days later. So the vaccine may not do much to ease California's December stay at home order. Sergio Quintana, NBC Bay Area News. New at 11, another popular pandemic attraction in San Francisco is temporarily shutting down. We're talking about Fort Mason Flicks. The drive-in theater has been a source of outdoor entertainment for many during the pandemic. Moviegoers tonight offered their thoughts on the new health orders. It's complicated, I guess, but um, I think there's a, you have to kind of strike a balance between how people police themselves and, and what's left open for the economy and for businesses to run. And Fort Mason Flicks will screen its last film tomorrow night before going dark until the stay at home order is lifted. In many cities across the Bay Area, streets have been shut down to help restaurants set up tables. Now that's going away and cars are returning to downtown areas, something people don't necessarily want anymore. Here's NBC Bay Area's Marianne Favreau in Palo Alto. Palo Alto first shut down California Avenue to help restaurants survive during challenging times. Now those restaurants have to pack up everything because cars are going to once again move through here. Tonight may be the last night Evan Johnson and his family can walk down the middle of California Avenue in Palo Alto this year. At 10 tomorrow night, Santa Clara County will prohibit outdoor dining until January. Restaurants here will have to revert back to only offering takeout and delivery. And this street will reopen to make that easier. I'm really disappointed. Uh, I really like the outdoor dining. And, uh, you know, I like that it's been closed off to the cars. Um, you know, it's just a really nice atmosphere out here. Richard and Eileen Stoley specifically dined outdoors tonight because they knew it would be their last chance for a while. Eileen says she's always felt safe dining al fresco. I do think it's a bit extreme. I do because we are our, our, our restaurants, the people that work in this community, this is another blow to them. Michael Campilongo is one of the owners of Tarun and Italico in Palo Alto. With only to-go orders, he says he'll be forced to reduce his staff to a third of what it is now. We're trying to switch like we did before and uh, take out only. But of course, uh, it affects our business a lot, mostly because we have to let people go. Uh, that's the main concern we have. Uh, consequences are... Uh, Unemployment, and that's uh, the status part. 
In addition to the financial challenges, restaurants here also have to scramble to take down their tents, move their furniture, and store their patio heaters to accommodate cars rolling through here again starting Tuesday. Investments they made to try to survive COVID pushed aside for now. In Palo Alto, Marianne Favro, NBC Bay Area News.